So I think there's been 50 years of the Civ, well there has been 50 years of the Civ program at Providence College and it's been an incredibly successful interdisciplinary program that all of our students participate in. I think looking back over the past 50 years, we can also see some room for improvement in the program. And one of the things that I'd like to work on specifically is making it a more student-centered program. So increasing student engagement in the program, um, getting students to feel like they're more of a part of the program, and working towards more inclusion of more students who feel more engaged and involved in the program. I think that's my big goal, is to really shift the focus to students and see how the program is meeting their needs and how it might work better to meet their needs as students. Both the kinds of content that students are engaging with in the program in terms of the books they're reading and the assessments they're doing, but also thinking about what skills would be helpful for students to build. We talk a lot about teaching critical thinking and critical approaches to texts in CIV, and I want to make sure that we're actually accomplishing that kind of critical thinking by the time the students complete the CIV program after four semesters. In any given year, there's about 80 to 90 faculty involved in the CIV program, and the main four departments that provide faculty to the CIV program are theology, philosophy, English, and history and classics. And in addition to that, particularly in the fourth semester of the program during the colloquium, we have faculty who come from other departments across campus to participate in the program. So we've had folks come from biology, from the business school, uh, we've had some folks from political science come and teach in the program. So that's a much wider net and we have a lot more folks who are participating from across campus. Yeah, there's been two additions to the course-wide uh, or the program-wide objectives. Um, and one of those additions is to have students think during the CIV program critically about the terms Western and civilization. I think one of the most controversial parts of the program at the moment is precisely the name of the program. And so we'd like to get students to think very critically about those terms and what they mean and what they mean to them in terms of being in this particular space in the 21st century in Providence, Rhode Island. What does this term mean, Western civilization, and how has it shaped their moment and their place and time here uh, in the 21st century? And the other th new focus for the program is making sure that we address more texts from populations that are traditionally underrepresented in the CIV curriculum. So those are two changes that students can see right away, but we'd like to work on more changes over the next few years, uh, again, focused on student inclusion and student engagement with the program. I think one of the big ways in which it can become more inclusive is focusing on student participation. I think the large lecture format twice a week can often be difficult for students to engage in, but I think there are creative ways we can think about as a faculty of how we can get students to be more present in those lectures and to make them a little bit more active in terms of learning uh, rather than passive. So I think that's one thing we can work on. A lot of the faculty have been working with some creative lecture techniques. Some of them have been using Top Hat to get students to engage during lectures. Some of them have been doing online kinds of quizzes or small group work or discussions in lecture. So I think that's one way to increase student engagement. I think the seminar, however, is key here. Um, how can we think creatively about getting students engaged in seminar? And that's always the challenge of the CIV faculty, is how can we creatively engage our students in seminar? And I know a lot of faculty are doing some innovative things in seminar, both with technology, but also just getting students to respond with the kinds of texts that students read. Students tend to respond well when they can see the connections between the texts that they are reading and their everyday lives. 
and that can be the, the difficult connection to make. Um, so I taught uh, with uh, Dr. Chris Arroyo last year. I had the privilege of teaching with him and he's a philosopher. And one of the things that he did so well for students was to say, it seems like you might be reading a, a text by a dead white guy. <laughs> However, these ideas in this text have shaped you in ways that you don't even see. Let's figure out what the ways are that you might not see. So for instance, if you're reading someone like Immanuel Kant, he might seem completely irrelevant to your life, but his notions of gender, of sexual complementarity, his notions of morality, deeply influence what we see as common sense today, right? So making those texts come alive for students can really help more students feel like these texts and these works matter in their lives. There will always be different colloquia offered, and I think the colloquia are really one of the biggest success stories of the CIV program over the past 10 years. Students really respond to them well, they enjoy taking them, and, and honestly, if I had my all of my wishes come true, I think the other three semesters of CIV might look a little bit more like the colloquia. So the colloquia aren't going anywhere. I think the smaller class sizes are really beneficial for students building relationships with faculty members, and I think the thematic focus of the colloquia are great, in the sense that students from the get-go really see why the texts and the reading and the work they're doing in the colloquia matters um, and why it's relevant to their lives. And I'd like to bring a little bit more of that spirit into the first three semesters of CIV. I mean, I'm really excited to work with students and I encourage students and faculty to reach out to me and talk to me if you have ideas about how you'd like to see the program change. I've already talked to a lot of students over the past year and, and, and listened to what they were asking and I hope to build that into the program, but I am always happy to hear from more students and plan on talking to many more of them, but I just want everyone to know that I have an open door policy and I want us all to work together as a Providence College community to make this program that is something students come here for and want to participate in.